Alrighty, folks. Okay, what's going on here? Just letting people know I've started the stream with some. Yeah. Discord. <clears throat> oh, I can see my board's not in the uh, video. It's because I stretch it across. It's a bit further. Oh, oh. Towards the uh, monitor, otherwise the cable doesn't reach the VGA cable. Um, maybe I should just disable that for the moment. There we go. Um, I notice we don't have anything else. What should we have first? We need to look at what we're going to do today. Let's do a list. Um, I have tea, by the way. Too, too much sugar for my liking, but there you go. Um, right, frame rate looks good. Let me know, everybody, about the audio or anybody. Um, I really need to set some more scenes up on this. When I transferred over from the laptop, I didn't import any of the scenes. I set them all up manually. So only, I only set one seam up. I could do with having some more scenes. Uh, I wonder if you can copy and paste. Duplicate, there we go. And if we can do this dynamically. Wow, I just realised how much noise there is in the... Um, in the... Um, logic. Bear with me a second. I'm just going to mute for a second. Hold on. Sorry about that. <laughs> Always happens. Uh, my oldest. Um, where was I? Oh, I was going to do a list. So, uh, Laurie says the audio is fine. Hi, Laurie, by the way. Thank you. Uh, let me see if I can get list up quickly. Probably need to do a new um, project. Where do I want to go? I want to go there, and then I want to run. How's everyone doing, by the way? Have you had an exciting week? Um, I've had a very intense week, to be fair. Let me clean the ID up. The 
this got? Uh, which one's this black crab? Okay, let's just create temporarily. Let's just create a new um, scratch file. Yeah. So let's look at what we are going to do today. Um, let me switch scenes. It's uh, interesting. Do that. Um, I'm on the left now, aren't I? Let me know. I think I've just changed the settings. So, um, what we need to talk about is um, we need to talk about uh, first of all um, nice um, Blazkais. It's a new version. What else we need to talk about? Uh, we need to do that. Let's just let's do change the order of that. Interesting. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, we also need to do. Uh, what did I say? Tiles. Um, pricing. We need to cover and cord. What else did I say we were going to talk about? Uh, I can't remember. What we'll do for now, let's get rid of that. We're going to see the. Um... Oh! That's very strange, right? In fact. I don't understand why that did that. Uh, right now I'm confused as to why that's not showing. Hold on. Hold on. It's showing. Showing the wrong file. Crap. Ah, uh, my stone. Okay, we're back again. That was very odd. So let me just um oh. it's 
sip of tea. Right, so uh, let's just cover those in order. There's probably more. I can't remember off the top of my head what I said. Um, anyway. Let's talk about the logic board first. So, if you remember, uh, the solution is built up of a kind of um, a control board which sits on top, then underneath that a uh, bus board or mid plane if you like, and then underneath you can slot in the tiles. That's you know the 3D free layer sandwich if you like from top to bottom. I mean you could see it the other way around if you want to, but that's kind of the way I see it. Um, so ice logic bus is effectively now mid plane I'm trying to get my technology sorted here um, what do I mean by mid plane well if anyone's familiar with a, a back plane what you have is cards that slot in you know like this you know at right angles to a card with sockets on uh, and I've had this discussion before with others. Uh, I did look at going the back plane route in one way rather than tiles. But there are all sorts of mechanical problems going that route and it's not as good. It's not as cost effective. And it's very difficult to get right angled surface mount connectors of any kind of density and mechanical strength. Um, the mid plane route still acts like the back plane did but it's actually what's called what's known as a mid plane but in this case the things that are attached to it are tiles horizontally so you could call it a horizontal mid plane if you like and then above it you have the control board that fits on top so it's a multi-part solution in three layers now the black ice board is an implementation of this uh, stack um, and the ice logic but a bus is the middle part that's the bit that has the FPGA on it so let's look at that now because I've, I've finished routing all of this um, let me see if I can open up KiCad here and, and logic <clears throat> so that's what um, the ice logic board sorry the ice logic bus it is a board as well looks like um, and that sits in the middle of the sandwich underneath go the tiles and above it goes the control board um, this is now completely rooted I'm just optimizing uh, finishing off certain design constraint tests and double checking for errors uh, and working on the silk screen. So I always do the silk screen last. Um, but I'm quite happy with the layout. So some of the things that have changed here, um, I can't remember which, when I last showed this. I think I last showed it when the control part was on the same board. So there's quite a big change now. Before we had the the control board and then we had a mezzanine level which was just for the memory but in this case what we're doing is the memory goes on the control board which sits on top as does the microcontroller so the main chip on the bus board which is in the sandwich in the center if you like that connects to the tiles is really just an FPGA board so you see the FPGA in the middle here that's the ICE ICE 40 HX chip um, the uh, BGA and um, just to explain the connectivity here so the blue connectors that go horizontally across so that's this one this one this one and this one 
Those are on the underside of the board because we're looking at it from the top, looking down on it. And the tiles connect underneath. Um, so one of the things that you can do with that is, is a tile can actually have a reveal coming through the aperture. What do I mean by the aperture? These are the apertures. These are the tile apertures. So if you can actually see what's on the underside of the tile here. So for example, one of the things that you can put on there is one of these. So if we use a seven segment tile, that aperture will fit in one of these. Could also fit in other elements. So you can add visual elements, which is quite a handy thing. Um, so the red lines here mostly go out from the um, FPGA, the ice 40. Up the top here to the um, kind of uh, the north, the northeastern, sorry, the northwestern uh, tile connector. The ones going out on this side go to the northeastern tile connector. The ones down the base here go to the south uh, western connector, and then the ones to the uh, right here go to the uh, southeastern tile connector, which again sits on the other side of the board. In addition to that, that's going on on the underside. Um, and those are fed via these resistor networks as well, by the way. That's what all these little things are. So if I was to scroll in here, you can see a bit more closely. These are basically resistor networks. Those help terminate the signal. Because I've got less on the board now, I've got more room uh, in order to put those um, series uh, uh, resistors on each line and what this does is it tries to match the impedance of the line. That means you will have reduced ringing etc less reflections um, with the peripherals given that the signals traverse a little way up through or down through a connector onto the other board and then through that routing on that board. So it provides a better better solution. Um, and I'm now doing that on all of the uh, IOs that are going out through the board, down through the tiles. But I'm also doing it to the mezzanine now, or what used to be the mezzanine, but what is now called the control board, if you like, or the personality board was a way of calling it, or a characterization board. And this is where the customization comes in, in, in this, this particular project. So if you look at the board here, the red connectors are on this side, so they're on the top when you're looking down and this side. And that's what the board, the control board on top, what used to be the mezzanine, plugs into that board. The top layer of this three part, three layer sandwich is chalk ice. We had some interesting conversations about naming. And <laughs> On Discord, and we ended up uh, talking about what what the free layer sandwich reminded us of. Uh, for me, it was a, a, a chalk ice, which is a layered chocolate with ice cream in between. Um, and there are all sorts of other things. Um, there was one which was like a square. Uh, one of the things we're thinking of is <laughs> what happens if we made the ice logic bus white, and then you'd have two black bits and a white bit in the middle. Uh, and someone character I can't remember who did it. Someone characterised this as being like an Oreo. It might have been um, uh, Western, but I can't remember off the top of my head. There was a number of people in that conversation, uh, and I said chalk ice, and um, which is kind of the other way around. And then um, <laughs> the next day, Lori came back and said, "No, no, no, it's all wrong." It actually looks like, you know, a, a plane, a cut through uh, of a Battenberg cake. Uh, you can go and check out all of that nonsense uh, on Discord if you want to, along with some suitable pictures <laughs> copied to express those things. Because we were trying to come up with names and we were thinking of like uh, black ice, chalk ice, uh, black ice or chalk ice. We were thinking of um, 
numerical things such as Black Eyes 100 and Black Eyes. Uh, I can't remember half of them now. They're all there in the. Uh, it was an engaging conversation. Uh, but yeah, we got round to food themes and candy and ice cream and cake and God knows what else. Um, I don't think, I'm not sure I've got any candies today. I'm going to let everyone down by not scoffing candy on midstream. Still got my tea though. Anyhow, I think I'm digressing a little. Where were we? So I'm describing the Ice Logic, uh, ice logic bus, which is this, the middle of the sandwich. It's the cream in the Oreo. It's the chocolate in the chalk ice. Um, so that really distributes the logic and the signals. And we've also got power supply section down here that derives from, you know, the kind of <coughs> low voltage supply from USB, like uh, five volts. And that converts that to three volts and one volt two from memory. Um, but there's not a great deal else on there. And that's, that's key. That is key. Most of the other signaling, there is some small amount of signaling that then goes up to the mezzanine. So I, I keep saying mezzanine because I've gotten used to calling it a mezzanine, but it's actually the control board. So on top of this sits the control board or the personality board or the characterization board, etc. Um, and then what goes on the characterization board is the thing that turns it into a solution, if you like. Um, and today what we want to talk about is the Black Ice version of this. So the Black, Black Ice, the new version of Black Ice is effectively built on Ice Logic bus technology and tile technology. Uh, and the Ice Logic and Logic bus just represents tile connectivity, if you like. It's it's what forms the mid plane of the tile connectivity. Are there no connectors on the ILB, USB or others? That is correct, there isn't uh, any on there. Well, there is an LED, by the way, it's down here, a status LED. Uh, oh, I've turned off the, um, the routing on that layer for some reason. Anyhow, um, so yes, so no, there is no connectors. Yes, you are correct. The connectors themselves actually reside on the control board that sits on top, primarily because they are mostly connected to that. You know, the ICE Logic bus is primarily concerned with connecting uh, the um, control board to the tiles. Um, you can think of it that way. Um, so that's all done, and I've got to um, I've got to finish the silk screen on this. I've got a few more tests to run in terms of the uh, design checks and stuff, but that's kind of ready to go now, more or less. Um, let's also now open, if I can, see if we can open the, um, the control board. Well, this doesn't have a, um, Let's just re import it, I think. Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Wrong window. Bear with me. That is the one I want. Open recent. I better re-import it. 
I'm going to get the wrong version. Uh, I had this problem earlier. Let's go up to changes. Changes. Um, same file right let's re-import uh, the right file this time shall we donkey honestly Okay, here we go. Oh, so that didn't remember that, so I've got to reopen that. That's annoying. So this is the control board that sits on top. Um, this is the top of the chalk ice, the Oreo. Or the end slice of a Battenberg. <laughs> um, so let me go through this first, I guess. Because um, I don't know, probably not seen much of this. So we see the mezzanine connectors. Now, just to co totally confuse you, we're not looking at this from the top, we're looking at this from the bottom. Because in reality, this will be flipped and goes on top of the um, the ice logic bus. I know that's confusing, but it just makes sense when you're designing it to design it with the components facing you, which in this case happened to be the opposite way round. So these components are facing downward or into the sandwich. So you've got two layers of the sandwich. You've got this board on the top, which is the control board, with the components on it facing down. And then you've got the ice logic bus beneath it with its components facing up. Slightly confusing, I know. But that's just the way it is, as the song goes. So let me go through this. This is the new black ice. So the new black ice is a combination of this control carrier board on top and the ice logic bus underneath, along with any tiles that are added in for the solution. Just in the same way that we kind of had uh, with black ice MX, we had the ice core on the top and then we had the uh, kind of carrier board below. But in this case, we don't have a carrier per se, we have a mid plane instead with the connectivity to the devices on tiles in this case rather than p mods um, but one of the noticeable things here is you'll see that we've actually got p, p mods built into the top layer already as default uh, and the reason for that is that because it's a black eyes product uh, people are expecting p mod connectivity as a minimum so we provide this as a minimum the fact that, um, I'll talk about it later, but one of the first tiles that we're gonna supply is a tile that can be used to add more P mods, mixed mods. Um, Laurie says, uh, is the uh, ice logic board still 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters? Um, it is four times the size of a tile effectively in terms of height and width, not area. But, well, it is four times zero. But. So let's just go through this. So we've got the uh, microcontroller in the centre here. Again, this is already rooted. Uh, I'm running some checks on this at the moment, going through, double checking everything. Haven't done the silk screen yet. Still lots of uh, fiddling about with the silk screen. 
I may do a little more optimization. Whereas the ICE uh, logic bus is a four layer board, um, the control board in this case, not in all cases, but in this case is actually a two layer board. Um, and the reason I've done that is to keep costs down. So here we have the microcontroller in the center and that is the uh, STM32 F7, uh, F730 in fact, uh, 100 LQFP. Um, as you can see very clearly if we zoom in here. And um, that is obviously the center of this piece. Then to the east and west or west and east depending which way you look at it these these are actually inverted so it's a bit confusing uh, your left your right uh, looking at it from this point of view we have the interconnect between the control and the ice logic bus uh, those are the two vertical ones that we saw just now on the ice logic bus on the top of the ice logic bus board so they engage with these two. And these carry all the signals between the memory, the external memory that we're providing uh, for the solution and to the, uh, the microcontroller. That's their primary purpose. Um, let's go through what we've got here. Before I do the peripherals, the memory is here. Can you see we've got two hyperram memories here? One of which is a hyper RAM, the other which is a hyper flash um, on the same bus with different chip select pins. And the hyper flash also has a, uh, um, it has a separate interrupt as well, which goes to the microcontroller, but that's, we'll talk about that another time. That's primarily for when you're, I believe, for when you're erasing uh, long sections just to optimize the process. The rest of it are really peripherals of the STM32, or they are IOs of the FPGA. So if we concentrate on the connector on this side, we're obviously carrying up the hyperbus, in this case, from the ICE logic bus to these two chips, uh, the hyperflash and hyperam. In addition, we've got some signals um, that are going to things like the microcontroller here. So we've got the quad SPI bus and an interrupt going between the microcontroller and the ICE logic bus. The actual, sorry, the ICE 40 HX that's on the ICE logic bus below. Um, On the left here, we've got a bunch of connectors. So these connectors actually sit in between the sandwich of the top and the mid plane, but they're actually attached to the top facing downwards. We have the um, STMMC card socket, connects to the microcontroller. We have a USB to full speed connected to the microcontroller. That also supplies five volts uh, for the logic. We also have this here, which is the de debug connector for the STM32. If you remember, we can just plug in, you know, uh, an ARM compatible JTAG mini, you know, 0.05 pitch or 1.27 mil pitch spaced uh, connector in there for debugging purposes. Um, that has SWD, so SW clock and SWIO data. It also has SWO, so we've got uh, you know real time monitor out um, rather than having to use printf statements and stuff. And then that you, you can use printf type uh, stuff within Rust, which gets um, actually shoved out the SWO rather than taking up one of your peripherals. Um, it's also easier from a debugging point of view because you're not trying to debug what you're debugging, if you see what I mean. 
Uh, I think we've carried covered that before in the previous versions. Um, and then below this, again, we have another USB, but this USB is primarily for power. So this is power delivery, which is controlled over I2C, if you look very carefully. We have a teeny tiny thing here. Teeny tiny USB power delivery controller. That's going to be fun, putting that in there. Um, and then that, in turn, supplies the... Uh, the high power to all the tiles. So it takes it down through the top level of these two connectors and distributes it. Uh, and that's split two ways. There's one level on the bottom, one level on the top. Just like the, there's an I2C on the top and I2C on the bottom. Um, because the those power wires come up from the tiles separately on each one of these, on the four quadrants, we could theoretically build a control board that had four different power zones so each tile could have its own power zone if we really wanted to at this point I'm not we're using the same um, you know power delivery mechanism over USB from a single uh, power over USB uh, solution but there's nothing stopping us we could do a board with four you know uh, power over USB USB connectors on if we so wished or some other you know, solar powered version. It's completely possible to do that because of the way that the power is zoned. Got complete control over that. Um, below this, we've got an audio connector. This is the only thing that I haven't yet routed because I am debating whether to include this or not. There is a digital audio peripheral inside the STM32 and I am debating whether it makes sense to connect that up. Um, I'm also trying to work out the best way of doing that. So that's just, I've got to sort that out in the next couple of days. Um, I put it on there for now, for the moment. And then below that, we've got an LED, RGB LED, which can be used for various statuses um, from the STM32. Uh, it can be used to show transmission of data etc and then we've got the DFU programming button slash mode button similar to what you saw in the previous iterations of this and or um, iScore as well um, on the right hand side here what we have is basically uh, double P mods you'll recognize these but the bottom double P mod here can be configured either as a pair of double P mods or as a single mix mod uh, I will, I'm debating what to do on this I'm thinking of providing the connectors and people can populate them themselves and maybe offer options depending on what they want but you can think of this generally as a mix mod on the bottom and then a P mod on the top, plus a few extra connections in between to carry uh, either a UART or a couple of GPIOs in I2C on this one. So built into that board is the capability straight away to use P mods out of the box. Just plug them straight in. You don't need to add a P mod title in order to use P mods. Uh, the reason I've kind of gone this route with the black ice is because of the there is a kind of expectation of PMOD support because of it black ice's history, which has always been associated with having PMOD. Not only that, if anyone else is upgrading from older versions of black ice and they have an investment into PMODs or mixed mods for that matter, um, they can take advantage of that and reuse those. Uh, with these devices, as I'm sure a lot of people already do have. Um, and these are obviously connected to the FPGA. Most of those come up through this uh, connector here, but a few of them come from this connector. Plus the mix mod piece in the middle is the analog signals, as well as five volts and ground. 
at the top, which is a bit more difficult to see on this diagram, is an LCD connector here. If you look carefully, that that's a 40 pin FPC that will go to <clears throat> slightly slanty on that import. Anyhow, that, that will go to an LCD display. <clears throat> and it's a 16 bit wide um, interface, parallel interface um, that supports 8080, 6800 type parallel interfaces. <clears throat> and that's connected to the microcontroller. Inside the microcontroller, we've got this 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 support for being able to output the video using the SRAM inside the uh, um, microcontroller, and that in turn can be programmed, if you like, from the FPGA. You could think of the the, the microcontroller here as a number of jobs. <clears throat> One, it programs the FPGA. Important. It manages the FPGA. Two, it can be UHART if required. Three, it can program and reprogram. It can also change contents of flash, etc., etc. Although it needs to put in the right synthesis first. Um, <clears throat> and then, and it controls the power delivery mechanism. <clears throat> it also, <coughs> excuse me, it also reads the SD card. The MMC card um, and then the newer feature that we're looking at adding is a kind of a display processing unit a DPU not really a GPU but a DPU um, by reusing the unused SRAM um, it can act as a frame buffer effectively uh, and output to an LCD and we talked about that I think a little bit last time <clears throat> then on the other side you've got this uh, battery connector so you can slide in a what a 2032 I think now the battery backup uh, in terms of crystals it's got a fast crystal and a low frequency crystal like a 32k K crystal um, so it has all the things every single pin on this microcontroller is being used in fact I could have done with more strangely um, so I've really squeezed everything I can out of it. It also has its own internal spy flash, which it uses to keep the images to program the FPGA and anything else it needs. So for example, it could keep fonts in there if it wants to. If it doesn't have enough room, its own flash. Um, what else? What else can I show you on here? That is pretty much it. And the name, this text doesn't look right because I imported it from Eagle. So it's done something really wacky with the fonts. It looks a lot nicer actually in um, in the original cap file, but anyhow. So what I'm calling it here is the the name I finally settled on was Black Ice uh, NXT. I mean, we came up with lots of names and ideas, but in the end, I couldn't really use any of the ones that had any meaning. Trying to put some meaning to things like you know a few numbers or letters is kind of difficult. Um, you know. So in the end, I was thinking, you know, well, the last one was MX. Could the next one be NX? <laughs> Just numerically, you know, in the, you know, base 26 of the alphabet, uh, N would be the next one. So you could call it Black Eyes NX. And then I thought, well, it sounds exactly like MX. So that's really a bad idea because people get mixed up. Um, so I thought, oh, NXT, that's a good abbreviation. And it really basically says what it is. This is the next generation of Black Eyes. Um, the next generation being, you know, the Logic Bus uh, stack, if you like. So um, that's what uh, we're going to call it, unless there's any big objections. And I do need to get it sorted because I want to order these PCBs this week. So Black Eyes NXT, or black eyes next you can pronounce it either way you like hope I haven't offended anyone by not liking their idea or using their ideas directly it was a nightmare naming always is that's where we are let me have a sip of tea and I'll let that sink in questions please
I mean, most of this stuff we've discussed. This is just the concrete version of those, the implementation, or at least the design. I don't have the boards yet, obviously. Oh, and I do have some candy, I just remembered. My daughter brought me. She suddenly had a desire to get uh, boiled sweets. And um, when she was ordering some online, you know, she was saying, what a good boiled sweets. And I said, oh, I remember, I, you know, when I was younger, I used to love these. Uh, Sherbet lemons. So I've already broken into these. These are very addictive. I love these things. Uh, anyone in the UK will be familiar with these. I don't know about how popular they might be elsewhere. I might have one of those as my candy break. I'm going to need some sugar later. Uh, Laurie Griffith says, how would you mount the LCD? Um, well, it, the LCD could actually sit on top. Because remember, although we're looking at this board like this, we're looking at the underneath. On the other side, it's completely flat. So, you know, between here, 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 and here, you've got quite a bit of room. You know, you've got... Um, 60 to 70 mil by 100 mil that you can mount an LCD on if you so wished. Or you could actually cover the apertures as well, move it up. It depends whether you've placed this battery holder or not, because the battery holder I won't install as standard. That's optional. Most people don't use it. Um, so you can install that yourself. It's dead easy to solder because it's massive. Um, in fact, you need quite a lot of soldering I to solder these. So yeah, probably the LCD. I mean, if you're mounting it in a box or something, then you decide where it goes. But if you're just uh, using it as a sandwich, then the LCD will go on the top of the sandwich, which is the other side of this board. So literally the cable will go around like that. Um, that's why it's a line near this aperture here, so that you can take it through this, up through this aperture. Because the control board has the same apertures that the IceLogic uh, bus does. Excuse me. Just get a tissue, bear with me a sec. That answer your question, Louis. I'm drinking my tea. I swear that camera gets higher every time. It's really odd. And I can't move up any higher. Well, I can, but then the chair hits... The arms of the chair hit the desk. Not only that, my head will go off the top of the picture. It's just it's kind of at an angle because it's mounted on top of the above the screen it has to be kind of high up it's a bit annoying really spend a lot of time looking at the top of my head So does it deliver everything that everybody wanted? I very much doubt it will deliver everything that everybody wanted. But I hope it does deliver a lot of what people that have been joining me on the recent streams have talked about, asked about, requested, helped me with, etc. Yeah, the battery has this Yeah, so if you look at this, I don't know if I can. so the battery, the battery connector in this case is mounted on the opposite side. So if we, let me see if I can turn off a few layers, it become more readily apparent. These, it, the order of these things is really weird. That brings them in. 
Um, let me see. Where else do we need to leave? Uh, courtyards. some of this stuff. There's a lot of layers here, I'm afraid. Oh, I need that. Let's get rid of these top ones. And... Get rid of my damn um, can't get rid of the uh, liars. That would have to do for the moment. So, here on the other side, or what would be the top if you were looking at it we can mount this uh, battery connector. And that just takes one of the um, 2032s. Uh, a bit like those sort of batteries, you can see. But the uh, holder's different. In this case, the button cell, this one, slides in from the bottom here. Uh, I can turn it on and off. You can see where they're representing the, uh, the battery, actually. That bit's the battery. Yeah. Oop, no battery, battery in. No battery, battery in. To give you an idea, does it answer your question? So I don't have a um, separate connector at this point. It's a, a coin cell holder that can optionally be soldered on. It's really easy to solder it on because these pads are massive. You know, anyone can kind of do that soldering. That's the only place I could get it to fit, really. Let me turn all the other layers back on. That's the battery. Let's turn the other stuff on. Two, 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 two. I should probably turn the um, silks off because they're just. Confusing. That looks a bit strange. Trying to remove some of the noise here. Ooh, what layer is that one then? Cut and paste. You see, there we go. Looks a bit clearer temporarily. What is the connector between the mix mod and the P mod? Uh, that's just a uh, six pin right angle connector that has a few optional pins on there, like a couple of GPIs, IOs that could be used as a UART. 
um, and um, I squared C. And I think power as well. Three volt free and thing. So if you wanted to add like an I squared C peripheral or something or a UART peripheral, you could do. Uh, again, I these aren't necessarily things that you'd populate unless, but they're there if you want to populate them. There are options. Uh, I think I've covered all the bases here. I mean, they have a facility for digital audio in there as well. The problem with digital audio is standardising the connectors. The only thing that has any real standard connectors are things like SPDIF, and I'm not sure. Even though I can support SPDIF, um, you can't use the larger... Often they're used in, like, um, cinch or think or the phono connectors which are too wide you can't it, they won't fit in the sandwich so i've got the you know the small jack here and i could take those digital connectors to these jacks um and then in software you can choose whether you're running spdiff or uh you know i squared I, i2s or pdm you can do that million software. That's kind of my thinking. Um, the STM32 has this kind of super audio peripheral um, that can be changed in software as to what it outputs. Um, so that can be wired to the to that jack, effectively. But it's optional at this point. I'm not sure if we need it or not. I mean, the FPGA is more than capable of doing audio, but it might be another useful task to offload. Plus, you've got all the DSP stuff built into the STM32. You've got floating point stuff, which may be useful for doing the DSP work on that side. And it could be used input or output, of course. Yeah, audio connections were a bit tricky, really. Very non-standard. Oh, thank you. Keep me up. I was up at the crack of dawn this morning. I had to take my partner to um, get a scan. The scan appointment at the hospital was 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> so we had to leave pretty early. Any further questions on this? Otherwise, I shall move on to the next things on our list. Or any questions about the Ice Logic Bus? Or the naming? Etc. Better check this call, actually. I haven't looked at that. That's good. Excellent. Well, tea's finished. How are we doing for time? We're doing good. We should do a swap rooney into the 
the colder stuff. So I want to order these PCBs this week, so that's why I was getting them finished. Um, next I want to talk about, I think it was tiles, was it? Let us just see what's on my list. So yeah, Black Ice NXT, Black Ice Next. Yeah, tiles is next on my list. Uh, one of the things I've done with the tiles, so if there's no questions on this, I'll move on to the tile stuff. I'll leave that up so you can look at it. I'll sit back and talk about this a little bit. So, tiles. Um, I've enlarged the tiles. So they're now 50 by 50, give or take a fraction of a millimetre. I need to leave a little bit of spacing. It's really difficult to get the tiles off. That's what I've discovered on the prototype one because they're so tight. Um, so, yeah, having a little tiny air gap helps. Uh, they were 50 by 44, I've now expanded them to 50 by 50. It gives a little extra room beneath the tile connector. Uh, it's a slight physical change. It just means it's flush. So when you've got four fifties, fills the one hundred perfectly. Because we don't have the mezzanine in between anymore. Remember, because the mezzanine is now on the top level of the three-layer Oreo sandwich, a rectangular or square Oreo. Um, so what tiles am I going to do first? And what's going to be offered with black ice so I think we already know some of those there is the seven segment tile and I will do that primarily because um, these are so popular in fact I've run out of these on the ice uh, on the black ice MX because on the design of that board I use resistor arrays and the resistor arrays I'm using I cannot get anywhere in the right resistance value or anywhere near the right resistance value. It's driven me nuts. Really annoying. But on the new, uh, on the ICE, um, uh, ICE Logic um, Buster Tile version, I, I've, I'm using newer, newer resistor arrays. They're actually smaller. So it won't be a problem. So we're going to have the seven segment one. It's obvious. Um, the only thing I'm doing now is I'm flipping it around so it displays up, so it appears through the aperture um, here or here. Um, VGA tile. I'm doing some work on that. One of the things I'm going to add to the VGA tile is some jacks that will actually come out the side because they can't come out the top to do. Um, well, they can do a number of things. They could output audio, for example, or they could output an input PS2. So you could possibly plug in two PS2 peripherals, but you'd need a PS2 to jack converter. Uh, um, maybe one of them could be an I squared C. So I could have up to maybe three jacks on them, running a combination of different things. And that might be useful for things like the DIY keyboards I talked about before. That could be, that's just using the extra uh, microcontroller pins effectively. Uh, the GPIOs and stuff that are left over after the VGA. So I'm looking at reworking those. Uh, so the VGA is an obvious one. Um, so those two are kind of the obvious popular ones that people use a lot. So I'll have those ready. I want to try and get those designs in so I can get those ordered for this. 
the other thing I'm going to do is if you if you remember or if you've uh, looked at the um, Black Ice MX board, uh, the other popular things that uh, are chosen with that are the prototype mix mod, which is this one. Very simple, and that just plugs into the P mod. Again, you'll be able to use this with the Black Ice MXT um, Black Ice Next mix mod socket. Um, so if you've already got those, that's useful. And I may continue to I may get some more of these made. Uh, the other thing that's really popular are the breadboard adapters these ones and they kind of come out the side here and then plug into the breadboard uh, show. Hold on. if we can get this in view so if we look at I just realized my light wasn't on If you were to look at what that would look like, I'll show you an example here that's plugged into the side of the logic. <laughs> Just drop the fretboard. Can you see that adapter being used there? So that's one of these connecting one of those mini breadboards. So it's got a single uh, line of the mix mod, then has pins in it which connect into the breadboard itself. So it breaks it out. So again, we can do um, we can reuse those. Obviously, if you've got them, and I may still offer them. Um, but, 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 better still. Oh, oh, there's one other really popular um, mix mod peripheral, which is the extender slash tester. Come on, focus. There we go. What that does is it plugs into the P mod. On one side and then offers the same output there but breaks out the center pin which you can connect to things like logic analyzers and stuff so you can do kind of man in the middle probing on a uh, mix mod or p mod or a couple of p mod peripherals again that's very popular so what i was thinking is wouldn't it be good so if we had a double tile that did all of those things so that's kind of what I'm working on now a double tile that will offer mix mod connector and the additional P mod double P mod connector and it had a prototype area on it so you could do prototypes on it and maybe it has the sockets as well for putting in a header to do your um, logic probing. So it could do perhaps uh, all three of those on a single board and there's enough room there to do all of that. I won't do the breadboard stuff because well um, that's not quite as practical. We use the P mod breadboard adapters to do the breadboard stuff, but that way we'll cover our bases. So that's what I'm thinking of doing on tiles initially, on the first pass. So those will be available from the initial, uh, or with the initial black ice next. 
as an option. Um, that's where, where I am with tiles. Other tiles I'm working on are things like, well, you probably already know from the previous episodes, things like HDMI tile. Um, I've got a stepper motor tile that's in progress. I've got a small motor tile that's in progress. A heavier duty brush motor driver that's again in progress. Um, and then I did all sorts of other ones as well, as you know. But I've got lists of tiles that we need to design. But initially I want to offer those other basic ones because those are the most popular configurations or most requested, most popular things. Any questions on the tile front before we move on to the next bit? I'm going to rehydrate. I'm trying to get through some of these things because I'm not sure how long I'm going to be hanging on given my um, early start today. And it's been pretty busy too. So. Okay, so the next item on the list was pricing. So when I talk about pricing here is if you were to go on to Tindy and purchase a Black Ice Next, that would contain the Black Ice Next controller and it will also contain the Ice Logic Bus pair. That is the minimum requirement. And that includes all your memory. So what are you getting here? You're getting, let's just list what we get here. Probably list these actually just so we know. Uh, I was going to say BGA class keyboard, wasn't it? Um, and then the other one was the, the other one I mentioned was the seven. What are the features that we are effectively charging for here? Um, so let's look at the memory. Um, no, in fact, let's start with the. Uh, P mods 
can't remember how I specified it actually. Oh, not PD, not um, P mods. P mods. As standard, you get four. You get six. So that goes something like, uh, what was it, uh, six, three, uh, one, plus one. So in other words, you get six P mods, three double P mods, T mods if you like. Or one mix mod plus one double mix mod. That's standard out of the box. Um, optionally, you can actually extend that by adding on tile P mods to. So the option on here would be. How many would you got? You effectively tripled that. Because the tile um, the tile P mod adapter has the same things on it that the controller board has on it, i.e. a mix mod and a double P mod or triple double P mod or you know hex P mod want a better term but what you're getting as standard is that connectivity wise um, you're also getting tiles them four places I guess so up to four tiles um, it's actually connectivity there's a bit more connectivity as well with the I squared C etc uh, you're getting uh, the 16 bit oh weird bit bit parallel uh, LCD uh, yep, but that's an FPC right FPC. Uh, it's a 40 pin FPC um, Uh, SD, uh, MMC, oh, keep getting the wrong keys here, SD slash MMC, uh, and that's um, SD, sorry, SD4, MMC, 4, uh, Socket, card socket, card sucker. Um, 
I want to see what I've done. Um, what else have you got on here? You have, you have, you have, you have. Um, USB, CDC, and logic power. We have USB power delivery at tile power. You have, what else do you have? Uh, audio, digital audio. Digital audio. Can be SP diff I to S. Um, you have TFU. Node button. You have now oh, the um, SWD debug. What am I missing? What am I missing? So it's all the connections. Um, you have 64 megabit uh, which is 8 megabytes of micro RAM I'm using my column keyboard. Yeah. One, two, oh. eight. Hyper flash. Um, and then FPGA embedded memory. You have. What is it? 16 bit, isn't it? Sorry, 16K. That's 120. One, two, eight. eight. K bit. 
in her right. Uh, that's in the FPGA. You have I think it's 256 to 256 uh, megabytes. No, I'm talking about kilobytes. <laughs> Uh, RAM. Are they called blocks? I can't remember. Oh, is it blocks? Uh, 256 S kilobytes fast as well. WF7. Um, what else do we have? Have we covered our bases? That's it. Oh, one minute. Sixteen megabit spy flash as well. Yeah, that's optional. Sorry, Laurie said don't forget battery connection. Uh, I'll put that actually on. Star it so we know. Covered our basis. I haven't forgotten anything, have I? So let's compare this to. Uh, current black ice MX relatively I know we're in a different environment and things are more expensive now I don't just mean from an inflation inflation point of view I mean literally getting chips is a nightmare and you have to pay through the nose for them so everything's more expensive um, P mods 
as standard on the Black Ice MX, you get three mix mods. Well, actually, you get two and a half because one of them's already been used. Half of one's already been used for the SD card. Um, so you've got two and a half P mods, which translates into you know one, two, three, four, five D mods, or ten single P mods. Um, so you have more of those, although the Black Ice Next is capable of doing more of those if you add those prototype tiles, um, which are actually quite economical, the prototype ones. Um, one thing that you've got that you don't get with the MX, of course, is tiles, four of them, essentially. Massive win. Massive win. And the reason we've got tiles is because they are better mechanically as well as electrically and they're mixed signal. Plus they provide power for devices that need, you know, the more specialist power supplies or power provisions. And I squared C and a few other bits and bobs like reset enable. So massive advantage. Doesn't exist on MX. 16-bit parallel uh, LCD output. Again, uh, you had an LQF 64 pin, so that wasn't possible on the MX. So that's new, that's addition. It's a nice big win with the advantage of that being able to be used, you know, as a, you know, a, a DPU, display processing unit. Um, the SD4 MMC, that's pretty much the same. The only difference here is it's not wired in parallel with the FPGA separate. Um, so some may say the MX has a slight advantage there. Um, if you want to be able to read it from either. Um, I mean, we will offer potentially a SD card on the tile. I don't know if we'll be able to fit it on the prototype tire, the standard, maybe, possibly. Um, USB, CDC, logic power, that's the same as the ice core. No real difference here. Um, the only thing I will say here is that these are USB C's, which are better. They're also more expensive, considerably more expensive, um, I should add my pain um, otherwise it's pretty similar USB-C power delivery that wasn't available at all so that's a new feature the digital audio from the STM32 wasn't available that's a new feature if you mode button that's the same as black ice MX SWD connector the advantage here is you've got a proper JTAG interface, standard interface connector, plus you've got uh, the monitor, the SWO, which we didn't have on the others. In terms of memory, um, we've got 64 megabytes of uh, megabits of hyper RAM instead of uh, what was it, 16 megabits of SD RAM. So this, this will be similar performance in terms of transfer, but with a higher latency than the SD RAM. Um, 128 megabits, which is a lot of flash, plus it's it, it's obviously faster when it comes to retail, the hyperbuster and the spy. Uh, the i40 uh, ERAM blocks are the same. The F7 memory is the same. Um, although we're trying to put that to better use here. Uh, the MX had four megabit SPI flash. This has 16 megabit and it didn't have coin cell battery. Um, Ice 40 BRAM, not even, oh, BRAM, thank you. I've forgotten what it was called. Thank you, Laurie. <coughs> um, 
Number of lookup tables the same. I didn't write that down. Uh, reuse it's, it's up to eight pounds lookup tables. SP diff, not SP diff. Two diffs. There you go. Um, currently, pricing for the MX is basically seventy dollars. It's actually sixty nine ninety five or something. That old biscuit, um, seventy dollars. What I'm thinking is, for all of this, uh, because you're getting more and because it's more expensive to get the damn things, um, uh, I'm thinking it's also bigger boards, more PCB cores, etc., 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 more connectors. I think. Um, and also the micros are much more expensive now as well, not just the FPGAs. I'm thinking $100. That's kind of where I reckon. What do you think? I don't like the spelling of this coin cell. Coin cell is one word, is it? Or is it two words? I think $100 is a fair price given the advantage that you have on this. I mean, the Hyper RAM is really expensive as well. I will add that point in, as is the Hyper Flash. Incredibly expensive at the moment. Laurie says, I was expecting more. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's worth more. I don't know. It's my first stab. Um... So Liz, if it's more, we're breaking through the $100 barrier. I think... Uh, hold on. The only other price point I thought was maybe $125, but I think that's too much. Um, mm. Tricky. Laurie says, uh, $100 sounds good. I was expecting more. I don't know. It's very tricky. I mean, obviously, I'd like to sell it for more. But I want it to be competitive as well. I want it to be reasonably priced. Um, the tiles, of course, you'd probably add on. Or any mixed mods that you buy with that you need to add on. I would have thought minimum 100, maximum 125. Before you add anything on, such as mixed mods or pre mods. Tricky. Pricing is always tricky.
I mean, I could give myself a bit more headroom to allow for component issues. It's so difficult at the moment. Right, I'm going to go for one of my candies while we're thinking about this. These are so good, lemon sherbets. I'd share them. Would you like one? No? I'm going to talk properly now. <laughs> Give you guys a chance. I don't want to undersell it. I certainly don't want to oversell it. So tricky at the moment. I mean, we're all hoping that the component cost is going to come down, right? In this case, I've already paid. Certainly, for however many I'm going to sell in the next year, probably. No, yeah, depends on the sales rate, of course. But. Do I need to think a bit more about that? I will need to come up with a price. As I say, low end 100, upper end 125. As for its worth, I think it's probably worth a lot more than that. Probably worth twice that amount. <laughs> I'm just being very generous. I wish. I mean, it's difficult to compare in the marketplace, isn't it? I mean, if you look at the lower end, how much is Icebreaker these days? So, um, where's the shot? <laughs> so, Ice Baker is $65. And that is literally, you know, about as simple as you can get. That's an FTDI chip and an uh, ICE 40 uh, plus flash. And power supply and stuff. Oh, we have come now. If I heard you pushing the door, Twinkle, are you going for your um, your supper, second course? Just leave the door open, why don't you? Cat, <laughs> who have them? I don't know if there's anything comparative on the marketplace. Can you think of anything comparative? Sorry. Difficult to know what to compare it to. I mean, I'm using it, I'm comparing to um, 
MX. So it has some similar features in terms of Core FPGA and microcontroller. PMOS. It doesn't have tiles. It doesn't have all those other things that we've introduced and added. Also, MX was priced based on, you know, greater availability of parts, quite frankly, a pre-pandemic chip pricing. Maybe it did go up slightly, but not hugely. Well, at least let me show that's good. Have you finished? Of course, did you finish your second course? Did you? I'm going to say hello to folks. Hmm? I'm going to say hello or are you going back out again? Garden? Fair. What a surprise. You need to pluck that to let you out. Yeah. Out for her evening stroll. She'll do the rounds around the house. Yeah, it's difficult to know what to compare it to, Laurie. Oh, I'm getting to the sherbet soon. I can just taste the sugar, but it's starting to leak out. Damn, these are good. It's going to be terrible for my teeth. Interesting. I mean, if you were to use the cheapest ULX3 is 115. Yeah, but that's a slightly different category. It's a different FPGA. Um, they're not really a direct comparison, but yeah. I wonder how much the new ones are going to be actually. Is it? Has um, Gorin come out with any pricing for the XLS4? Which has a lot less on it. I think he's taken... By going the CM4 module route, he's only providing the very basics on it. So it's probably going to be similarly priced. But he's taking out all the extra costing, etc., I guess. So he's probably thinking... You can do it for a similar price by taking out all the other bits and bobs. I mean, if you had an icebreaker FPGA at 65 and you added single hyper RAM to that, that would add another, what, $17. That doesn't include your flash, obviously. Your hyper flash. So you're already up to $80. And you've got fairly limited connectivity on that. And you don't get a microcontroller. You don't get analog. You don't get mixed signal. You don't get SD cards. You don't get all the other things on that list. Oh yeah, maybe hundred dollars is too little in the current age.
Even the orange crab is $120, isn't it? I know that's ECP5, but not exactly much on that board, really. Bit of memory. It's a dip board. Feather type style. I can't think of anything directly comparable. To be fair. Nothing that makes pricing obvious. Um, how are we doing for time? Okay, I think that's enough on price, unless um, anyone else has any comments. Um, right, so. Oh, let's talk about this. So, what's next on the list? So, the next thing on the list was core dev. So, my proposal here, my plan here is initially I want, including myself, five people in the core dev. Um, so I want to offer effectively uh, four early boards, what I'm going to call the core dev team, and the core dev team will be able to make, um, get access to the uh, repositories and the organization that will house those primarily for de development purposes. Oh, Glasgow is $145. Yeah, what does that? So that has a yeah, similar ice. It's slightly different. Yeah, I don't have a list of those features. That has level shifters and things as well, which is quite neat, but that's because it's made for a fairly specific task. It also has a USB to high speed 805 one, but I don't think it does any of the analog or anything. Doesn't have any of the mixed signal stuff, it's just digital. Um, but good point. If you could get one, yeah, well, you know, I'm still waiting for mine, strangely, as is everyone else. Um, well, appear to still waiting for the, the damn chips. You can promise them, but they still haven't arrived. Surprise, surprise, you know, given current climate. Bloody nightmare. Same for Luna, by the way. Um, and I do have all the chips for Black Ice NXT next. <sighs> I just got to do the cleverness of putting them on the uh, boards. So, what well, I was thinking for the core dev. Five people, including myself, as core dev. So I will make, my plan is to make uh, five boards, one of which I will keep, obviously. The other four I will uh, make available to four other people. And I think I know who those four other people are likely to be. Um, some of them are probably watching the stream. Um, let me know. So you'll be able to buy these early. And then what happens is if we change the design, and there's always a good change chance of that, then I will just replace what you've got. That is unless you want to keep, you know, the original ones. For some reason. You know. 
obviously when black ice next becomes so very famous in future that uh, it has a classic fpga board valuation um and i don't know how much i'm going to charge but i want to include in the kit the initial development kit for the core devs i want to include probably a seven seg tile a vga tile and a um um proto p mod extender tile i've got a name for that yet the developer tile let's call it a developer tile double tile so you'd be able to fully populate it straight up and then what i need to do is just come up with a price for putting all those pieces together um for folks yeah i'll probably do them at like 150 dollars or something like that i don't know I need to look at that carefully. And then the other thing that will happen is those core devs will get um, initial versions of any of the tiles as well. Because I want the core devs to help me with the testing of any new tiles and things that I introduce. As well as obviously the involvement with the firmware and the HTL and the libraries and support and documentation, etc. So that's the plan. I'll come up with the small print for that. Um, and I want to get those made in the next few weeks. As soon as I get the PCBs, I've got all the components and I just need to assemble them. I'll assemble one first, test it, make sure the basic stuff all works and then I'll do the other four and then get them out to um, the core dev folks. Um, I think you know who you are. Um, if anyone else wants to come in early, it will be after those four boards, um, the four core dev boards, and then I might do an early bird. And I don't know how many of the early birds I'm going to do. And then I'll do the rest. And I'll also do the retro control board as well later on. <laughs> but that's further down the road. That's a bit more difficult to do that board, actually. In some ways, not in others. It's a bit more tricky because the PCB needs to be um, it's a four layer rather than two layer for the control part and the specs are higher because of the bga spacing on the f7 that's being used on that and i also have to worry about the well assuming i go with that that chip which i think i will not certain yet um do 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 so i want to get that done i want to have those out probably in a few weeks time i before the end of march those will be out um, and then assuming we don't hit any big roadblocks um, I will do an early bird on a first come first serve basis for a fixed number of boards probably um, in April to deliver in April and then the rest will be delivered you know May June in batches probably as we ramp up the volume um, that's assuming nothing is radically broken on the core dev build this month
that is the time scale. The early birds I will probably make available through I'm still working on the plan, but probably through Lectron's And I'm talking to um, Elaine, who's the one that develops electrons. He also um, uh, runs Omslo. Um, let me. Give you a link. This is where I'm looking at doing the early bird. I'll put it in Discord as well. This isn't core dev. Core dev I would do individually. This is the early bird in April. Oh, come on. Play nicely. Talking to these guys, uh, to Elaine about this. And I'll probably add them to Tindy as well later on. And we have more availability. These lemon sherbets are addictive. Stop me. I'm going to eat the entire jar in a few days. Somebody's pinging me now. Who's pinging me? Oh. Mm. Well remembered. Somebody remembered. Right. Um, any questions about the core dev stuff? Schedule, costings, plan. All the early bird stuff, although that's still a little bit sketchy in terms of how that rolls out, but April is what I'm looking at. So March for core dev, April for the early birds, general availability in May. Hmm. Presumably TNT is one of the core devs. Not necessarily.
I want to give um, the existing board I've got here um, to TNT to Sylvan because it's got the hyper ram on the board it will just make it easier for him and then we'll expand the support to the controller board the pinouts are the same I think maybe the CS pins slightly different but they should be the same um, what changes is the track characteristics slightly so we may need to tweak the uh, latency parameters timing parameters slightly but once we get the basic one working that'll be fine it's just easier for Sylvan to work on this one because it's all on there he doesn't need two boards and I'm not sure he'd want to be part of core dev anyhow but I know he's interested in doing the hyper flash he's already offered to do that mm -mm. hyper ram not hyper flash I don't know what I'm going to do about the hyper flash got to get the hyper ram working first The hyper flash will come second. It shouldn't be too difficult. Once we've done the hyper, hyper ram, doing the hyper flash is quite easy because the transfer part's done. It's just the register parts that you add in. Um, and then the write erase code. I mean, if Sylvan wants to be a core dev member, he can, but I. He's kind of into certain things rather than generic things. He likes to get really deep in certain areas, things like the hyper ram and stuff. So it's slightly different for him. You know, I can't see him testing tiles and things. That's not not really his bag, if you see what I mean. He likes to go deep, 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 deep into the FPGA. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'm probably going to call it for this stream because I am a bit more exhausted. It's been a very long day. Um, and I'm also out of hydration. be honest I probably just want to sit down and chill out for a bit before I get some Zeds folks mm, I had some interesting ideas as well for some new optimized P mods believe it or not as well as tiles some like indicator P mods and things, which would be kind of neat. Um, remember what uh, iPost was talking about in terms of displaying registers and stuff. Okay, well, if there's no more questions, let's call the stream. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do one on Friday because it's a really busy week this week. Um, probably not until next week. The regular, regular Wednesday spot, 7:30 p.m. ish GMT on Twitch, and then uh, obviously a recording goes up on YouTube after. Right, folks. Well, thank you for your patience. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, I'm really chuffed. That we're coming to um you know the conclusion of this design uh and getting getting the boards made to get the final testing done and get the production out because it's been hanging around for a long time but i'm hopefully you know not that i'd ever say i was a perfectionist hopefully this is now 
as right as it can be. I'm quite happy with the design. I feel comfortable with design. I feel comfortable with the, the, the layouts on the board, you know, with the signal integrity, etc. I mean, we'll see how it comes out in the wash when we put the square Oreo together. The square Oreo that is black ice next. Thank you, folks. I will uh, speak to you all soon. I will be down on Discord, of course, if you want to join us. Till then, ciao.